Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas and with me here is Team 18457. They were the winning Alliance captain and second Inspire at their Southern California Championship. But I think a little more importantly, there are Houston Power Play World Champions, winning Alliance captain of the entire tournament. Just absolutely fantastic. You know, they came back as fourth seed of the Edison division and went to win the entire thing, losing only one match through the entire eliminations period. Coming up on behind the bots this is just going to be a great interview this video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. All right, guys, let's get started with your drivetrain. From the top, it just looks like a standard mechanum drive, but I see there's very little uh, showing, actually. Like, you have everything covered. So if you could walk me through your drive base and chassis and how you decide on this very covered design and uh, walk me through your mechanum briefly. All right, so we have a fourth, this is our fourth generation uh, mechanum drivetrain, and we decided to make a small drivetrain to make uh, driving through the poles and junctions more easier and faster. So I believe it's about 12 by 12 inches. And one, my favorite thing about this drivetrain is the wiring and electronics all underneath this drivetrain. It looks simple on the top, but under every under the drivetrain, it all looks completely compact and like a little complex, but we made it work. And our, I really like uh, how we did our wire management with our three odometry wheels for our tracking on the, and localization. And here are drive hubs to connect and program. And yeah. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fantastic. You know, definitely super, super clean wiring. And, you know, obviously your drivetrain is just really, really reliable, exactly what you'd expect from our Power Play winning Alliance captain. So now jumping into your turret, you guys have a very, very smooth turret mechanism. Walk us through how you made it, any changes it's gone through throughout the season and where it's at now. Yeah, so we started out with our turret design in, at the beginning of the year, um, and we'd always uh, thought of it as a decent strategy. But um, as we progressed through the season, um, we actually developed and designed our first turret robot for our qualifi qualifier in SoCal. Um, it was very, very similar to this. In fact, it was on the same drivetrain base and same upper plate base. Um, however, this allowed us to swap our um, top plate and uh, upper bearing plate design and what this did is it over constrained our thrust bearings but it made our turret super super stable and that was one of the things that we found that was really really important um, for co scoring consistently is um, not having the shake at the top which is amplified by the turret being loose yeah and so you mentioned you use those thrust bearings so can you just uh, talk briefly about where you sourced all the parts for your turret uh, you know your bearings the large sprocket you have there and any other components you think mm -hmm. are important uh, so for spe specifically the parts um, we sourced the thrust bearings from Amazon um, we've used uh, six millimeter inner di diameter by uh, two millimeter thickness. Uh, by a 19 millimeter outer diameter, and that just gives a really, really good um, support base to build our turret on. Um, for the actual stack itself, we used uh, Go Build a Standoffs as well as some 3D printed spacers and Go Build a Spacers just to get the perfect spacing on the turret. Um, for our upper plate and lower plate, we CNC'd both of them. Um, one of them was from one of our in house CNC's, and the other came from Send Cut Send. Awesome, and yeah, that's just absolutely fantastic. Now let's go on to your linear slide system. It's super, super clean, really fast. Walk us through how it works and if you've had any challenges you've had to address throughout the season. Yeah, so the linear slides are something we definitely had struggled a lot with last year. Um, we found that we have to run our uh, lift motors together, so we use 3D printed gears to accomplish that, and that just allows us to always uh, make the turret ascend uh, in sync as we go up. Yeah, and so you, I see you guys have like two prints there. So is it like a combined gear and pulley print or are they separate? So those are separate. They're actually held together in the center by a, uh, a sonic hub, uh, which uh, we use to attach it to the motor. Uh, but it's very, very compact because we had to make sure that it would fit properly. So the amount of rotational space that our robot takes up is very, very little. Yeah, and now let's jump into your arm. You guys have a super, super long arm. So, you know, tell me if the design has been the same throughout the entire season or if it's changed and how it works. 
Um, so we started out with a virtual four bar, and it was really, really good. In fact, we also had it on our regionals robot, which we won the SoCal championship with. Um, but going into Worlds, we definitely decided we need to switch our strategy to a pass-through. Um, so we took a lot of inspiration from uh, what Terabats was doing um, in NorCal. And um, it was just a great way for us to accomplish um, our, the uh, task of scoring cones because we can just um, collect and pass through. And that helped our auto and teleop become more, much more consistent. Yeah, and so how are you powering it? Uh, you know, do you have any sort of springing system or did you just not really need any of that? Um, so we used dual Axon Max servos, um, which are mounted here on the back of the rope, uh, back of the lift, um, and they just uh, run the arm directly. Um, we run off a servo power module for um, definite, definite like extra power, but it makes our robot um, really, really fast, and we don't have to do anything special to it. Yeah, and as far as counterspringing goes, I see you guys have a spring here with some string. Is that a counterspringing system, or is that just for something else entirely? Uh, that's just our lift or track string. Um, we just ran it like that as it was the most efficient way to do it without um, getting in the way of our virtual four bar or anything else. It just prevented any sort of uh, tangling. Sure. Yeah, and I guess the thing that I really want to talk about with you guys is touching on your game strategy and general, just going into eliminations, how you decided your picks. So walk me through that. You know, you guys ended as fourth seed. How did you decide that you were going to pick quality control and don't blink? Our game strategy is based on the fact that every top team in the championship is able to fo score a maximum point. So a lot of the game is based on the strategy and penalties. So because we're the fourth seed, we are the last pick. So we have the most advantage through, throughout the division. So we pick the team who have the most potential. So we are able to fix their bot for them. And we are work together as a team, so that made us. Yeah, and you know, as you know, your uh, picks were our two dark horses for that Edison division. Obviously, it worked out, and you know, you guys just did absolutely fantastic. Do you have anything to add as far as picking and general game strategy goes? Yeah, so a lot of that um, helped from our scouting team, not just here in Houston, but also back in Southern California. Um, we have members f um, and mentors from 10298 Brainstorms as well as 20840 uh, Pineapple something who both helped us um, uh, create an alliance that was very very efficient at scoring while still maintaining the ability to win every single match that we could and this is all um, in thanks especially um, to just the teams from SoCal um, they helped get our field here um, our practice field which we were able to practice with for, with quality control for two nights on um, the first two nights of Worlds, which just helped us get that experience together that um, almost no other alliance had, as we had that chemistry. Yeah, no, that that's just absolutely fantastic. So, folks, you heard it here. This is Team 18457 Gator Bites, your Houston Power Play winning alliance captain, world champions. Just absolutely fantastic robot. Really shows you the power of simplicity and elegance in design. This has been an amazing interview. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. Reporting for first updates now. I'm Abbas, and this is Team 18. 457 the Gator Bites. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.